Well, I'm with um, Alan Wainwright. Um, Alan, who's a national account manager for, tell me the companies. So, Cooper Pegler and Bertu Professional Sprayers. And um, you've got uh, major influence and uh, concern about maintaining sprayers to avoid um, spillage, safety concerns, for all that sort of thing. Can you go into that a little bit for me, please? So that's right. Um, since being with the company and selling the two brands, my findings are that um, most sprayers that I come across are in a, a poor state. Many training companies that I deal with um, offering these uh, cutaway knapsacks, uh, much the same there. People don't understand their sprayers. They don't really know how it works. They don't understand how to you know, do a, a simple fix um, where it may not even actually be damaged or broken. Um, but that maintenance and upkeep, if it's not taking place, uh, could result in a, a spillage on someone's lawn. Uh, or you know a, a precious golf golf green even so um, it's something that I found that I really need to push to make sure that people understand um, and keep up with that continual maintenance. But like our car, like our boiler, yeah. it's something that requires a, a, a service once a year. Yeah, absolutely right. You wouldn't want it to let you down. I mean, in the lawn care market, for example, you, your mower it's your day to day. It's your you know your bread and butter. It's making you money continually. And same with uh, spraying, applying fertilisers on lawns. You wouldn't want it to let you down. You need it to work at all times, and I see it as just as important as a, um, you know, a lawnmower or strimmer or, or anything else that you know. Is within what, what should a user do on a daily basis to ensure that they're getting the most efficiency, the most effectiveness from their sprayer? I think first of all, regardless of whether it was washed through last with water or not, it should have been. Um, first thing you should do each day is test it with water again. Make sure it's working before you go mixing the chemical in the tank, um, and then progress from there for the day. And are you finding that that sort of information is something that people who are using them on a day-to-day -day basis just don't consider, don't think about? Absolutely that. I've, I've done my own uh, PA1, PA6 uh, training, so I'm uh, qualified to apply pesticides and so on. Um, and, you know, findings uh, around that are much the same. People just don't know really what they're doing until they've had the training. But even after the training, I'm finding that people are still not necessarily following it through, dare I say that. I suppose it's a bit like a driving test. You'd pass your driving test knowing you've got to look behind you and you've got to do everything correctly, but as soon as we climb into the car normally, a lot of these practices um, go out the window. Absolutely that. Absolutely that. And uh, again, if I can continue to obviously push uh, people to you know, make a point of actually looking after their, their sprayer, hopefully it will continue to, to serve them well in their, in their day to day. And how has the last couple of days been for you here at the show? Has it been? Have you had a lot of uh, passers-by popping on to find out a bit more about what you were doing? Lots. Yeah, it was it was more busy than I expected. If I'm being honest, um, I carry spare parts and bits and pieces with me, and I give away a lot of these uh, to customers that you know end, end users that uh, may need that part there and then, and they're very grateful just for you know odds and ends to help them do a quick repair on what's going wrong with their sprayer at this time. A show bonus. Something like that. <laughs> well, Alan, thanks very much for giving us that information. Thanks I know it's very, very important. And uh, we'll let you get back to it. There'll be a few more visitors coming through before the end of the show, I'm much sure. Thank you. Thank you very much.